the Torah, the Exodus, chapter 13, verses 17 through chapter 17, verse 16. Now it happened that when Pharaoh had let the people go, God did not guide them by the way of the land of the Philistines, even though it was near. For God said, Lest the people change their minds when they see war, and return to Egypt. Hence God turned the people to the way of the wilderness to the Red Sea, and the sons of Israel went up in battle array from the land of Egypt. And Moses took the bones of Joseph with him, for he had made the sons of Israel solemnly swear, saying, God will surely take care of you, and you shall bring up my bones from here with you. Then they set out from Succoth and camped in Etham on the edge of the wilderness. And Yahweh was going before them in a pillar of cloud by day to guide them on the way, and in a pillar of fire by night to give them light, that they might go by day and by night. He did not take away the pillar of cloud by day, nor the pillar of fire by night, from before the people. Now Yahweh spoke to Moses, saying, Speak to the sons of Israel so that they turn back and camp before Pihahirath, between Migdal and the sea, you shall camp in front of Baal Zephon, opposite it, by the sea. And Pharaoh will say of the sons of Israel, They are wandering in confusion in the land, the wilderness has shut them in. Thus I will harden Pharaoh's heart with strength, and he will pursue them, and I will be glorified through Pharaoh and all his army, so that the Egyptians will know that I am Yahweh. And they did so. Then the king of Egypt was told that the people had fled, and the heart of Pharaoh and his servants was changed toward the people, and they said, What is this we have done, that we have let Israel go from serving us? So he made his chariot ready and took his people with him, and he took six hundred choice chariots and all the other chariots of Egypt with officers over all of them. And Yahweh hardened the heart of Pharaoh, king of Egypt, with strength, and he pursued the sons of Israel as the sons of Israel were going out with an exalted hand. Then the Egyptians pursued them with all the horses and chariots of Pharaoh, his horsemen and his army, and they overtook them camping by the sea, beside Pihahirath, in front of Baal Zephon. Now Pharaoh drew near, and the sons of Israel lifted up their eyes, and behold, the Egyptians were marching after them, and they became very afraid, so the sons of Israel cried out to Yahweh. Then they said to Moses, Is it because there were no graves in Egypt that you have taken us away to die in the wilderness? What is this you have done against us in bringing us out of Egypt? Is this not the word that we spoke to you in Egypt, saying, Leave us alone that we may serve the Egyptians? For it would have been better for us to serve the Egyptians than for us to die in the wilderness. But Moses said to the people, Do not fear. Stand by and see the salvation of Yahweh which he will accomplish for you today. For the Egyptians whom you have seen today, you will never see them again forever. Yahweh will fight for you, and you will keep silent. Then Yahweh said to Moses, Why are you crying out to me? Speak to the sons of Israel so that they go forward. As for you, raise up your staff and stretch out your hand over the sea and split it, and the sons of Israel shall go through the midst of the sea on dry land. As for me, behold, I will harden the hearts of the Egyptians with strength so that they will go in after them, and I will be glorified through Pharaoh and all his army, through his chariots and his horsemen. Then the Egyptians will know that I am Yahweh, when I am glorified through Pharaoh, through his chariots and his horsemen. Then the angel of God, who had been going before the camp of Israel, moved and went behind them, and the pillar of cloud moved from before them and stood behind them. So it came between the camp of Egypt and the camp of Israel, and there was the cloud along with the darkness, yet it gave light at night. Thus the one did not come near the other all night. Then Moses stretched out his hand over the sea, and Yahweh swept the sea back by a strong east wind all night and made the sea into dry ground, so the waters were split. So the sons of Israel went through the midst of the sea on the dry land, and the waters were a wall to them on their right hand and on their left. Then the Egyptians pursued them, and all Pharaoh's horses, his chariots, and his horsemen went in after them into the midst of the sea. Then at the morning watch, Yahweh looked down on the camp of the Egyptians through the pillar of fire and cloud and brought the camp of the Egyptians into confusion. 
and he caused the chariot wheels to swerve, and he made them drive with difficulty. So the Egyptians said, Let us flee from Israel, for Yahweh is fighting for them against the Egyptians. Then Yahweh said to Moses, Stretch out your hand over the sea so that the waters may come back over the Egyptians, over their chariots and their horsemen. So Moses stretched out his hand over the sea, and the sea returned to its normal state at daybreak while the Egyptians were fleeing right into it. Then Yahweh overthrew the Egyptians in the midst of the sea. And the waters returned and covered the chariots and the horsemen, even Pharaoh's entire army that had gone into the sea after them, not even one of them remained. But the sons of Israel walked on dry land through the midst of the sea, and the waters were a wall to them on their right hand and on their left. Thus Yahweh saved Israel that day from the hand of the Egyptians, and Israel saw the Egyptians dead on the seashore. Then Israel saw the great hand which Yahweh had used against the Egyptians, and the people feared Yahweh, and they believed in Yahweh and in his servant Moses. Then Moses and the sons of Israel sang this song to Yahweh and said, I will sing to Yahweh, for he is highly exalted, the horse and its rider he has hurled into the sea. Yah is my strength and song, and he has become my salvation. This is my God, and I will praise him, my father's God, and I will extol him. Yahweh is a warrior, Yahweh is his name. Pharaoh's chariots and his army he has cast into the sea, and the choicest of his officers are sunk in the Red Sea. The deeps cover them, they went down into the depths like a stone. Your right hand, O Yahweh, is majestic in power, your right hand, O Yahweh, shatters the enemy. And in the greatness of your exaltation you pull down those who rise up against you, you send forth your burning anger, and it devours them as chaff. And at the blast of your nostrils the waters were piled up, the flowing waters stood up like a heap, the deeps were congealed in the heart of the sea. The enemy said, I will pursue, I will overtake, I will divide the spoil, my desire shall be fulfilled against them, I will draw out my sword, my hand will dispossess them. You blew with your wind, the sea covered them, they sank like lead in the mighty waters. Who is like you among the gods, O Yahweh? Who is like you, majestic in holiness, fearsome in praises, working wonders? You stretched out your right hand, the earth swallowed them. In your loving kindness you have guided the people whom you have redeemed, in your strength you have led them to your holy habitation. The peoples have heard, they tremble, anguish has seized the inhabitants of Philistia. Then the chiefs of Edom were dismayed, the leaders of Moab, trembling seizes them, all the inhabitants of Canaan have melted away. Terror and dread fall upon them, by the greatness of your arm they are still as stone, until your people pass over, O Yahweh, until the people pass over whom you have purchased. You will bring them and plant them in the mountain of your inheritance, the place, O Yahweh, which you have made for you to inhabit, the sanctuary, O Lord, which your hands have established. Yahweh shall reign forever and ever. For the horses of Pharaoh with his chariots and his horsemen went into the sea, and Yahweh brought back the waters of the sea on them, but the sons of Israel walked on dry land through the midst of the sea. And Miriam the prophetess, Aaron's sister, took the tambourine in her hand, and all the women went out after her with tambourines and with dancing. And Miriam answered them, Sing to Yahweh, for he is highly exalted, the horse and his rider he has hurled into the sea. Then Moses had Israel set out from the Red Sea, and they went out into the wilderness of Shur, and they went three days in the wilderness and found no water. And they came to Marah, but they could not drink the waters of Marah, for they were bitter, therefore it was named Marah. So the people grumbled at Moses, saying, What shall we drink? Then he cried out to Yahweh, and Yahweh showed him a tree, and he threw it into the waters, and the waters became sweet. There he set for them a statute and a judgment, and there he tested them. And he said, If you will earnestly listen to the voice of Yahweh your God, and do what is right in his sight, and give ear to his commandments, and keep all his statutes, I will put none of the diseases on you which I have put on the Egyptians, for I, Yahweh, am your healer. Then they came to Elim, where there were twelve springs of water and seventy date palms, and they camped there beside the waters. 
Then they set out from Elim, and all the congregation of the sons of Israel came to the wilderness of Sin, which is between Elim and Sinai, on the fifteenth day of the second month after their departure from the land of Egypt. And the whole congregation of the sons of Israel grumbled against Moses and Aaron in the wilderness. And the sons of Israel said to them, Would that we had died by the hand of Yahweh in the land of Egypt, when we sat by the pots of meat, when we ate bread to the full, for you have brought us out into this wilderness to put this whole assembly to death with hunger. Then Yahweh said to Moses, Behold, I will rain bread from heaven for you, and the people shall go out and gather a day's portion every day, that I may test them whether or not they will walk in my law. Now it will be on the sixth day, they shall prepare what they bring in, and it will be twice as much as they gather daily. So Moses and Aaron said to all the sons of Israel, At evening you will know that Yahweh has brought you out of the land of Egypt, and in the morning you will see the glory of Yahweh, for he hears your grumblings against Yahweh, and what are we, that you grumble against us? And Moses said, This will happen when Yahweh gives you meat to eat in the evening and bread to the full in the morning, for Yahweh hears your grumblings which you grumble against him. And what are we? Your grumblings are not against us, but against Yahweh. Then Moses said to Aaron, Say to all the congregation of the sons of Israel, Come near before Yahweh, for he has heard your grumblings. Now it happened as Aaron spoke to the whole congregation of the sons of Israel, that they turned toward the wilderness, and behold, the glory of Yahweh appeared in the cloud. And Yahweh spoke to Moses, saying, I have heard the grumblings of the sons of Israel, speak to them, saying, At twilight you shall eat meat, and in the morning you shall be filled with bread, so that you shall know that I am Yahweh your God. So it happened at evening that the quails came up and covered the camp, and in the morning there was a layer of dew around the camp. Then the layer of dew evaporated, and behold, on the surface of the wilderness there was a fine flake-like thing, fine as the frost on the ground. And the sons of Israel saw it and said to one another, What is it? For they did not know what it was. And Moses said to them, It is the bread which Yahweh has given you to eat. This is what Yahweh has commanded, Gather of it, every man as much as he should eat. You shall take an omer apiece according to the number of persons each of you has in his tent. And the sons of Israel did so, some gathered much and some little. And they measured it with an omer, and he who had gathered much had no excess, and he who had gathered little had no lack, every man gathered as much as he should eat. And Moses said to them, Let no man leave any of it until morning. But they did not listen to Moses, and some left part of it until morning, and it bred worms and became foul, and Moses was angry with them. So they gathered it morning by morning, every man as much as he should eat, but the sun would grow hot, and it would melt. Now it happened that on the sixth day they gathered twice as much bread, two omers for each one. Then all the leaders of the congregation came and told Moses. And he said to them, This is what Yahweh has spoken, Tomorrow is a Sabbath observance, a holy Sabbath to Yahweh. Bake what you will bake and boil what you will boil, and all that is in excess put aside to be kept until morning. So they put it aside until morning, as Moses had commanded, and it did not become foul, nor was there any worm in it. And Moses said, Eat it today, for today is a Sabbath to Yahweh, today you will not find it in the field. Six days you shall gather it, but on the seventh day, the Sabbath, there will be none. Now it happened on the seventh day, that some of the people went out to gather, but they found none. Then Yahweh said to Moses, How long do you refuse to keep my commandments and my laws? See, Yahweh has given you the Sabbath, therefore he gives you bread for two days on the sixth day. Remain every man in his place, let no man go out of his place on the seventh day. So the people rested on the seventh day. And the house of Israel named it manna, and it was like coriander seed, white, and its taste was like wafers with honey. Then Moses said, This is what Yahweh has commanded, let an omerful of it be kept throughout your generations, that they may see the bread that I fed you in the wilderness, when I brought you out of the land of Egypt. And Moses said to Aaron, Take a jar and put an omerful of manna in it, and place it before Yahweh to be kept throughout your generations. As Yahweh commanded Moses, so Aaron placed it before the testimony to be kept. And the sons of Israel ate the manna forty years, until they came to an inhabited land. They ate the manna until they came to the border of the land of Canaan. Now an omer is a tenth of an ephah. 
Then all the congregation of the sons of Israel journeyed by stages from the wilderness of sin, according to the command of Yahweh, and they camped at Rephidim, and there was no water for the people to drink. Therefore the people contended with Moses and said, Give us water that we may drink. And Moses said to them, Why do you contend with me? Why do you test Yahweh? But the people thirsted there for water, and they grumbled against Moses and said, Why now have you brought us up from Egypt to put us and our children and our livestock to death with thirst? So Moses cried out to Yahweh, saying, What shall I do to this people? A little more and they will stone me. Then Yahweh said to Moses, Pass before the people and take with you some of the elders of Israel, and take in your hand your staff with which you struck the Nile, and go. Behold, I will stand before you there on the rock at Horeb, and you shall strike the rock, and water will come out of it, that the people may drink. And Moses did so in the sight of the elders of Israel. So he named the place Massa and Meribah because of the contending of the sons of Israel, and because they tested Yahweh, saying, Is Yahweh among us or not? Then Amalek came and fought against Israel at Rephidim. So Moses said to Joshua, Choose men for us and go out, fight against Amalek. Tomorrow I will take my stand on the top of the hill with the staff of God in my hand. And Joshua did as Moses told him, to fight against Amalek, and Moses, Aaron, and Hur went up to the top of the hill. So it happened when Moses raised his hand up, that Israel prevailed, and when he let his hand down, Amalek prevailed. But Moses' hands were heavy. Then they took a stone and put it under him, and he sat on it, and Aaron and Hur supported his hands, one on one side and one on the other. Thus his hands were steady until the sun set. So Joshua overwhelmed Amalek and his people with the edge of the sword. Then Yahweh said to Moses, Write this in a book as a memorial and recite it in Joshua's hearing, that I will utterly blot out the memory of Amalek from under heaven. And Moses built an altar and named it Yahweh is my banner. And he said, Because he has sworn with a hand upon the throne of Yah, Yahweh will have war against Amalek from generation to generation. From the Haftorah portion, which is the prophets, we have the book of Judges, chapter 4, verse 4, through chapter 5, verse 31. Now Deborah, a prophetess, the wife of Lapidoth, was judging Israel at that time, and she used to sit under the palm tree of Deborah between Ramah and Bethel in the hill country of Ephraim. And the sons of Israel came up to her for judgment. Then she sent and summoned Barak, the son of Abinoam, from Kadesh Naphtali, and said to him, Has not Yahweh, the God of Israel, commanded, Go and march to Mount Tabor, and take with you ten thousand men from the sons of Naphtali, and from the sons of Zebulun? And I will draw out to you Sisera, the commander of Jabin's army, with his chariots and his many troops, to the river Kishon, and I will give him into your hand. Then Barak said to her, If you will go with me, then I will go. But if you will not go with me, I will not go. So she said, I will surely go with you. Nevertheless, the honor shall not be yours on the journey that you are about to take. For Yahweh will sell Sisera into the hand of a woman. Then Deborah arose and went with Barak to Kadesh. Then Barak called Zebulun and Naphtali together to Kadesh, and ten thousand men went up with him. Deborah also went up with him. Now Heber the Kenite had separated himself from the Kenites, from the sons of Hobab the father-in-law of Moses, and had pitched his tent as far away as the oak in Zanamim, which is near Kadesh. Then they told Sisera that Barak the son of Abinoam had gone up to Mount Tabor. So Sisera called together all his chariots, 900 iron chariots, and all the people who were with him, from Herosheth Hagayim to the river Kishon. And Deborah said to Barak, Arise, for this is the day in which Yahweh has given Sisera into your hand. Has not Yahweh gone out before you? So Barak went down from Mount Tabor with 10,000 men following him. And Yahweh threw Sisera and all his chariots and all his camp into confusion with the edge of the sword before Barak. And Sisera came down from his chariot and fled away on foot. 
But Barak pursued the chariots and all those in the camp, as far as Herosheth Hagoyim. And all the camp of Sisera fell by the edge of the sword. Not even one remained. Now Sisera fled away on foot to the tent of Jael, the wife of Heber the Kenite. For there was peace between Jabin the king of Hezor and the house of Heber the Kenite. And Jael went out to meet Sisera and said to him, Turn aside, my master, turn aside to me. Do not be afraid. And he turned aside to her and into the tent, and she covered him with a rug. Then he said to her, Please give me a little water to drink, for I am thirsty. So she opened a bottle of milk and gave him a drink. Then she covered him. And he said to her, Stand in the doorway of the tent, and it shall be if anyone comes and asks of you, and says, Is there a man in here? that you shall say no. Then Jael, Heber's wife, took a tent peg and placed a hammer in her hand and went secretly to him and drove the peg into his temple. And it went through into the ground, for he was sound asleep and exhausted. So he died. Now behold, Barak was pursuing Sisera, and Jael came out to meet him and said to him, Come, and I will show you the man whom you are seeking. And he entered with her, and behold, Sisera was lying dead with the tent peg in his temple. So God subdued on that day Jabin the king of Canaan before the sons of Israel. And the hand of the sons of Israel went forth heavier and heavier against Jabin the king of Canaan, until they had cut off Jabin the king of Canaan. The Song of Deborah and Barak then Deborah and Barak, the son of Abinoam, sang on that day, saying, When the leaders led in Israel, when the people volunteered, Bless Yahweh. Hear, O kings, give ear, O rulers. As for me, to Yahweh I will sing. I will sing praise to Yahweh, the God of Israel. O Yahweh, when you went out from Seir, when you marched from the field of Edom, the earth quaked, the heavens also dripped, even the clouds dripped water. The mountains flowed at the presence of Yahweh, this Sinai at the presence of Yahweh, the God of Israel. In the days of Shemgar, the son of Anath, in the days of Jael, the pass has ceased. So travelers went by round about pass. The peasantry ceased, they ceased in Israel, until I, Deborah, arose, until I arose a mother in Israel. God chose new leaders, then war was in the gates. Not a shield or a spear was seen among 40,000 in Israel. My heart goes out to the commanders of Israel, the volunteers among the people. Bless Yahweh, you who ride on white donkeys, you who sit on rich carpets, and you who travel on the road, muse aloud at the sound of those who divide flocks among the watering places. There they shall commemorate the righteous deeds of Yahweh, the righteous deeds for his peasantry in Israel. Then the people of Yahweh went down to the gates. Awake, awake, Deborah. Awake, awake, utter a song. Arise, Barak, and take away your captives, O son of Abinoam. Then survivors came down to the mighty ones. The people of Yahweh came down to me as warriors. From Ephraim, those whose root is in Amalek came down, following you, Benjamin, with your peoples. From Machir, commanders came down, and from Zebulun, those who wield the staff of a scribe. And the princes of Issachar were with Deborah, as was Issachar, so was Barak. Into the valley they rushed at his heels, among the divisions of Reuben. There was great persistence of the heart. Why did you sit? In among the sheepfolds, to hear the whistling for the flocks. Among the divisions of Reuben, there were great probings of the heart. Gilead dwelt across the Jordan, and why did Dan stay in ships? Asher sat at the seashore, and dwelt by its landings. Zeblin was a people who despised their lives even to death, and Naphtali also, on the high places of the field. The kings came and fought, then fought the kings of Canaan. At Tanakh, near the waters of Megiddo, they took no gain of silver. The stars fought from heaven, 
from their courses they fought against Sisera. The river of Kishon swept them away, the ancient river, the river Kishon. O oh, my soul, march on with strength. Then the horse's hooves beat from the dashing, the dashing of his valiant steeds. Curse Meroz, says the angel of Yahweh. Utterly curse its inhabitants, because they did not come to the help of Yahweh, to the help of Yahweh against the warriors. Most blessed of women is Jael, the wife of Heber the Kenite. Most blessed is she of women in the tent. He asked for water and she gave him milk. In a mighty bowl she brought him curds. She sent forth her hand for the tent peg and her right hand for the workman's hammer. Then she beat Sisera, she smashed his head, and she crushed and pierced his temple. Between her feet he bowed, he fell, he lay. Between her feet he bowed, he fell. Where he bowed, there he fell violently, devastated. Out of the window she looked and lamented, the mother of Sisera through the lattice. Why does his chariot delay in coming? Why do the hoofbeats of his chariots tarry? Her wise princesses would answer her. Indeed, she repeats her words to herself. Are they not finding? Are they not dividing the spoil? A maiden, two maidens for every mighty man. To Sisera a spoil of dyed work. A spoil of dyed work embroidered. Dyed work of double embroidery on the neck of the spoil. Thus let all your enemies perish, O Yahweh. But let those who love him be like the rising of the sun in its might. And the land was quiet for forty years. And from the Berit Hadashah, which is the New Testament, we have the book of Revelation, chapter 12, and featuring the Song of Moses, chapter 15, 1 through 4. A great sign was seen in heaven, a woman clothed with the sun and the moon under her feet, and on her head a crown of twelve stars. She was with child, she cried out in pain, laboring to give birth. Another sign was seen in heaven, behold a great red dragon, having seven heads and ten horns, and on his heads seven crowns. His tail drew one third of the stars of the sky and threw them to the earth. The dragon stood before the woman who was about to give birth, so that when she gave birth he might devour her child. She gave birth to a son, a male child, who is to rule all the nations with a rod of iron. Her child was caught up to God and to his throne. The woman fled into the wilderness, where she had a place prepared by God, that there they may nourish her one thousand and two hundred and sixty days. There was war in the sky. Michael and his angels made war on the dragon. The dragon and his angels made war. They didn't prevail. No place was found for them any more in heaven. The great dragon was thrown down, the old serpent. He was called the devil and Satan, the deceiver of the whole world. He was thrown down to the earth, and his angels were thrown down with him. I heard a loud voice in heaven saying, now the salvation, the power, and the kingdom of our God, and the authority of his Messiah has come. For the accuser of our brothers has been thrown down, who accuses them before our God day and night. They overcame him because of the Lamb's blood, and because of the word of their testimony. They didn't love their life even to death. Therefore rejoice, heavens, and you who dwell in them. Woe to the earth and to the sea, because the devil has gone down to you, having great wrath, knowing that he has but a short time. When the dragon saw that he was thrown down to the earth, he persecuted the woman who gave birth to the male child. Two wings of the great eagle were given to the woman that she might fly into the wilderness to her place, so that she might be nourished for a time, times, and a half a time from the face of the serpent. The serpent spewed water out of his mouth after the woman like a river, that he might cause her to be carried away by the stream. The earth helped the woman, and the earth opened its mouth and swallowed up the river, which the dragon spewed out of his mouth. 
the dragon grew angry with the woman and went away to make war with the rest of her offspring, those who keep God's commandments and hold to Yeshua's testimony. I saw another great and marvelous sign in the sky, seven angels having the seven last plagues, for in them God's wrath is finished. I saw something like a sea of glass mixed with fire, and those who overcame the beast, his image, and the number of his name, standing on the sea of glass, having harps of God. They sang the song of Moses, the servant of God, and the song of the Lamb, saying, Great and marvelous are your works, Lord God, the Almighty. Righteous and true are your ways, you King of the nations. Who wouldn't fear you, Lord, and glorify your name? For you only are holy. For all the nations will come and worship before you, for your righteous acts have been revealed. <laughs> 